Good evening, everybody. We are back for the Hair Show, Series 2, Episode 6, I believe. And, yeah, change of evening again. Uh, here we are, Wednesday night, 9 o'clock. Are you watching? Well, I hope you are. Have you had a busy day at work today? I'm absolutely whacked. I've been full on on the floor today. So it'd be great to hear how your day's been. So you are listening to The Hair Show, watching in. This is your weekly show dedicated to the everyday hairdresser, the talk show. This is where we bring topics to the screen every week and this is your show the hairdresser's show and that's what we love we love to bring you in bring your conversations have you got things that you want to talk about that's great so let's have a look who have we got joining us tonight as you always know your comments we love throughout the evening so you've got to keep them coming so let's say hi to a few people here hi sean nice to see you back here uh we got mark there hi you mark hope you're doing well buddy uh, we have our Nicola there. Nicola, good to see you. Always our real regulars. Lee, there he is. Just shared the... Yeah, it's nine o'clock, so we can say that. So, uh, Emil, nice to see you back here, Emil. Really good to have you on board. Charlotte, you're here. You are here. We have Lucy. Good evening, Lucy. Pivot point. Wouldn't be the same without you guys here. Uh, we have Mohammed here. Nice to see you, Mohammed. Really good to have you here. Cherie... Uh, Alex, great to see you, smiley faces. Emma, yes, we have you all here. We're going to have a really big show for you tonight. So the first thing that I'm going to say to you all is remember, please do like, love and share the show. It's really important for us to get the message out there because this is why we do it. This is our hangout where we all come together to have great conversations. And if there are things that you want to be talking about tonight, then get them in the comments. And we're going to be flagging up your comments as we go through the show. You'll see me looking down here, looking at your comments coming in, <coughs> and putting them on. And I say every week there is about a 20-second delay from hearing me talk and me getting your comments back. So do be patient with us as we go through. So what have we got coming up on the hair show tonight? Well, let's have a little look. So coming up on the hair show tonight, well, shortly I'm going to introduce our lovely co-hosts. Always here every week, Jordana, Georgia Bell. We're going to have World Hair News with Jordana Cabela. Obviously, this is where she picks out her three big topics of the week. Always look forward to hearing what she's got to share. Then we have, yeah, this week we've got hairdressing horror stories. I could say sex stories, but hey, we'll let George explain on that one. Coming up. Then we're going into some big topics tonight. Silent service. Well, what is all this about? Well, this is effectively conversation in the salon. You know, are we all tired of small talk? Should we just be some, you know, having a bit of silence? Let's go into it. Eco salon, the big plastic problem. We know it. And PPE gear. Yeah, we're going to have some hard hitting facts on this. Want to hear your thoughts on this. And also, Jane Wallace, we lost somebody so respected in the hairdressing community. So, Sam, we're going to have. Uh, a real tribute to her. Andrew Dunn's going to have a few words. And also, we're going to be talking uh, as well in the show tonight about a hairdressing divide, north-south. Is there a divide there? They're just some of the topics. Let us know what you think. Bring in your conversations as we go through the show. But without further ado, let me bring them. They're here every week. They're sat there in the green room. Let's flash them up. Here is Georgia Bell, Jordana Cabela. How you doing? And a blonde Easy. Jordana Cabela. Hello. Hi, <laughs> hey, Dom. How are you? Well, let me just say to everybody, really good. Thank you, George, Jordana. Everybody, are we liking Jordana's blonde hair? Let's get some likes if I'm you are liking. Come on, let's have a look. What do we reckon, everybody? <laughs> Yes. Even I'm sending some love arts. I love it. Yeah, I think it looks great. When did you have? I'm feeling myself, guys. I really am. Not when was lie. this done? My good friend Alex did it from Goldwell, um, and it took about six hours, but it was it was great. It was a good challenge for him. I had a lot going on on my head underneath, so I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out. Yeah, I think it looks really, really nice. And also, George, your hair's there's a bit of a change going on with yours. The mullet is coming along nicely, my friend. Can you give us yeah. a little bit of a flash of the back there? Can we can we see how long that? Yeah. Hey, looking good. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's been very very good. So, uh, yeah. oh, what, oh, uh, unfortunately, I can't have a change of hairstyle. So we, you know, the, you, this is how it's always going to be for me, isn't it? The dome. I think I'm even past the point of hair transplants. I don't think that would cost a lot of money. 
Anyway, back air, they can take it from there. Anyway, that's another story. So, look, we've got lots to go through tonight, everybody. And uh, like always, we're going to kick off uh, with the hair show uh, with World Hair News with Giordana Cabella. So, over to you, Giordana Cabella. Now, for hair topic number one, we have a new startup in London called New Fade. New Fade is on a mission to make wigs cool with a focus on young black men. A technique that is popular in America and is also known as man weaves is involves attaching natural hair to the head using adhesive before a specially trained barber blends it in. You can check out more of their work on their Instagram page at New Fade. News topic number two, another new salon app. The Department for Business and Energy has announced the date for a new COVID-19 app will help hairdressers and barbers in England and Wales keep clients' details and track and trace where they're visited. The app will launch on 24th of September, which is tomorrow, and will be compulsory for hair salons and barbershops to download and display a QR code prominently on the premises for clients from that date onwards. In England, displaying this QR code from this Thursday, as in tomorrow, will be compulsory. Hair salons and barbershops who are already using their own systems on a track and trace system are encouraged to switch to the app. However, an alternative checking method such as handwritten register can continue to be as an alternative method. The latest announcement on the UK has reached a perilous turning point, according to Prime Minister Boris Johnson, news topic number three, as he set out a raft of new corona restric restrictions for England, which could last for up to six months. Shop staff will have to now wear face masks. Weddings will be limited to a maximum of 15 people under the new rules. Fines for breaking the laws on gatherings and not wearing a mask will increase now to £200 for a first offence. He also warned significantly greater restrictions could come if necessary. Bit of a bore, but we have to talk about it. And that's all from me for the World of Hair News. Yeah, there we are. I tell you what, it's doing a few glitches on us tonight. That's called us out twice there. So, yeah, a bit of a bore, but we were all sat there waiting for that the other night. And yeah, I, I saw it get flagged up, George. You know, people were still, oh, what's changed? Is there, is there differences in numbers in the salon? I mean, what, how did you see it? I find it all quite confused. I mean, I listened to it yesterday. I find it all, I think because it's so ever changing, I find it quite frustrating. You know, you're allowed 30 people to a funeral, you're allowed 15 people to a wedding. You can go and sit in a pub full of people you don't know, but you can't have more than six in your house. I find it a bit stupid, but <laughs> I'll adhere to it. Um, you know, but I, 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 my mind is boggling really. Do you know what I mean? The fact that I can't have my family around, but I can go sit in a pub packed full of people. I just find it crazy. Yeah, crazy. Lucy's just said here, Jordana, gutted about the cut to wedding party numbers for bridal stylists. It's a real stress. And, yeah, we kind of forget that's such a big part of our industry, isn't it, bridal hair work? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you particularly specialise in wedding parties, that, that you're going to get a big hit to your business. Definitely. We've got, um, we've got a regular viewer called Kim, and she's a bridal specialist. Um, she's worked for Hob. And she's been posting about it quite a lot, actually, that it's a, it's a big shame for her business as well. Um, I just, all we can do is hope that it will go away. <laughs> yeah. Very soon. Yeah. And I find the whole logging into system, like I've got forest systems in my salon, yeah, so everyone is automatically tracked and traced. Why is a paper copy all right, but anyone else that uses, uses a system should be encouraged to use an app? What's the sense in that? Yeah. yeah. Sorry sheet of paper with everyone's details on but it's all right don't worry about yeah, it charlotte's just said we write a paper copy daily lee i find it a bloody joke uh paul i agree with george but it is what it is yeah and colette here she's um it really will greatly impact public confidence which will show in column capacity uh, what Samantha got here to say? We can have anyone in our house, but we can't meet at the pub. Yeah, gosh, we're going to miss our Christmas work parties this year, aren't we? 
Can I ask a question as well? Do you feel like it's impacted on either of your businesses? Because I'll be quite honest, apart from that scare that I had at the beginning, I genuinely feel that my clients have not been put off to see me. And I mean, I would agree with Colette. And I think, yeah, it's, it's collateral damage, isn't it? Anytime the, the, you, you put fear out there, you're going to lose a certain percentage of people because they, they are going to get scared. But personally, I haven't really felt that. I haven't felt I'd, be interested, I'd be interested what you've said, George, and because I know I think it's very different for the big cities, certainly in London. Uh, I've got yeah. to be honest. And I know we've covered this before, haven't we, guys, uh, you know, about London. But I fear really big time for London, Jordana. Well, I mean, we we didn't think that it was this announcement was going to influence business. But as soon as it got announced, we had six cancellations. Did you really? So, yep. Yeah. This is it. it's, that, it's that nervousness, isn't it, here? Yeah. And, uh, already, guys, great. Keep these comments coming in uh, because, you know, I'm bringing these. Uh, Colette, it would greatly impact <coughs> confidence. So we saw that. I just saw this here. That's the one I wanted to go. You just have to display QR code and can use it on your own system. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just another change, isn't it, for everybody? But I guess what the one thing that we can say, regardless of this, is that we are still open. I mean, for me, yeah. that is, you know, we can all have our moans and groans about however this is working, but we are open and that has got to be absolutely fantastic. And as an industry, you know, as I've seen it before, I think we, we put, I put a post up in the community about different high risk ways to catch COVID and hairdressing was a medium risk. And that really incensed people because what they were saying, George, is, you know, hairdressing we're so good at you know this whole ppe and the hygiene of our salons yeah i think it, we were higher risk than going to a public toilet weren't we yeah we were which is absolutely <laughs> hilarious uh <laughs> i just i can't actually i just can't get my breath and you know apparently covid um only strikes after 10 p.m now as well with the new lockdown rules but hey yeah so There's sorry been so many funny memes about that actually <laughs> <laughs> Natalie's just put here, so she's, we are in local lockdown and we seem to have quietened down in northwest of England. So yeah, these local lockdowns will be the big thing, isn't it? It's, uh, it's here to stay, guys. So let me know, have you, are you finding your business is quieter or are you okay? Pretty much the same. So if you're quieter, put a yes. If you're pretty much the same, busy, put no, not affected. Love to know your comments. Right, we're going to go into our first topic tonight and and it kind of came about I, I think it was i think we touched upon this discussion last week or so was about conversations and and it came about i think from you jordan i think you nudged me in this one because you were saying you we were so bored of talking about covid19 and that led me then to thinking actually hairdressing conversations so let's go into it so we're gonna go into this topic hairdressing conversations Right, okay, so small talk. Let's start on this. I'll start with you, George, and I'm gonna come put this out to you guys watching in as well about hairdressing conversations. First of all, the, the, the thing what I've noticed, there's been this rise of silent salons, okay? Salons that actually have silence. Are you aware of these silent salons, George? Yeah. I Absolutely, yeah, I've heard of them, and I, I do think it's quite a, a niche, a niche market. You know, whenever I've I, I, I've had a girl that just recently left, but she was incredibly, incredibly quiet, like she didn't say nothing, uh, but she was a good hairdresser, and I, I actually thought about perhaps marketing her to do more of a silent appointment, more for her sake because she was under incredible stress to try and come up with small talk. Sometimes your stylists don't like small talk as much as your clients don't like small talk. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That is true. You, you can't teach somebody that. You can't teach somebody banter. It takes a while to get that. Yeah, what, but I, I like it. Yeah. What about you, Jordana, on this sort of silent appointment? Where do you stand? Do you, do you offer this? Well, I I think it's definitely something that we could start offering and see how it goes. I think. Part for me, the biggest part of hairdressing and service is connecting with people, and that doesn't mean that you have to connect with them verbally, 
but you do need to at least connect with them somehow emotionally even if it is non-verbally but I mean yeah I think I think sometimes we're all quite tired of small talk and it can tire us out and it's quite uncomfortable for the client too so why not why don't we try these and you know maybe put it on the booking form of the website to say you know you can have this opt for the silent service and and see what we get it would be good to pilot it really yeah I I also think though connection would be really difficult connections really difficult now with covid because of the masks so I do think we do need that kind of verbal connection because we can't see each other's faces it's like you know for the first time today one of my ladies changed her mask over and I was like Jesus Christ you know what you've been here three and a half hours and this is the first time I've seen what you look like Mm. and that's crazy to me crazy I'm already just seeing some of these uh uh commas coming in uh Lucy, I can be silent if I tried. Lee, love, you can't shut me up. Uh, <laughs> Saffron, I don't have an off button, even if I tried. Uh, Sean, he says, I like intimate talk. Get to the fun stuff. Uh, Lee, hey, Lee, doesn't that just come down to reading clients? I think that's a really good point there from Lee, actually. I think a, a great part of a hairdresser's skill, Jordana, is actually reading clients' skills. And I, I don't know, is there that intuitive part? You just kind of know when a client doesn't want to talk. Yeah, I, de- I definitely think you do. And you pick up on their energy, you pick up on their kind of like movements. You know that they don't like their hair when they're doing that at the end. And they're going, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. You can pick up on a lot, definitely. And some people hate, hate looking at themselves. They're looking down like that all the time. And, you know, they're trying to touch out to you like that instead of through the mirror. Okay. So there's so much you can pick up on. Here's the point there. So when you're sat in the chair, and I'll put this to you first, George, and you're having your hair cut, do you mm-hmm. not sit and chat away while you're having your hair cut? No, I don't. Why? I'm, I am because I'm a business owner and I want to be left alone and I want to have a minute <laughs> to have my but hair Surely cut that I- is the same for so many clients. We all love chatting. Yeah. But actually there's a lot of people that probably just feel too rude to actually say, look, I don't want to talk. You know, they just... If I really gel, if I really gel with somebody, you know, I have a few people who cut my hair that I really gel with, so I do talk to them. But if I was on an off chance going in somewhere for an haircut and I'd got some bird trying to make small talk about what she's doing at weekend I, and I didn't gel with her, mm. I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be overly like, oh, yeah, let's chat shit. <laughs> you know, I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. But... I think it depends on, and I think I think in consultation you can see this as well. So, like, if I've ever had a client sit in my chair, for instance, and I know they're not going to gel with me, but I can see that one of my team members is going to get on really well, I've actually swapped them. Yeah. At consultation, I said you should go to so and so. I think we are good at reading people, but I think that comes with experience. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and Emil, who's just his conversations, is one of the key factors in salon. And I think most clients would rather have some chat than none. I can't imagine not having a chat with clients. Now, this is a really interesting point. I know Emil, who I interviewed for the podcast about retail and what do clients really want to talk about? Because you know, many great retail experts will say, look, they want to just talk about their hair. So you know, here we are right now. Let's be honest, as hairdressers. I'm pretty sure a lot of us are talking about COVID. Hence why, you know, Jordana, you say, I'm bored of talking about this because yeah. we talk about it so often. So haven't we got to really push forward this conversation? And do clients really care about what you're doing in your life? Do they just want to talk about their own hair? I don't know. I, I personally think that they love to hear you know that you you remember what they've been doing since their last hair appointment and they love it when you ask them questions because that appointment time they're paying to have you make them feel good so it is it is their time and if you can impress them by being like how was your son's birthday or how's it going with your boyfriend i know you're about to break up with him they love that yeah that's true they thrive off it and they're like oh i'll tell you because you're also a one person removed from their social group but also from their family circle so you have like a complete different like power in terms of influence over them and they love hearing what you've got to say Mm. and so sometimes you can talk about the darkest things but it's quite funny because you both kind of take so you you both kind of mock each other and it becomes quite satirical and you end up laughing about quite dark stuff so yeah, I think I think it's good to chat about personal stuff, but you just have to be really, really um, 
aware of whether they want to go that deep or whether they want to see a dick pic or talk about your sex life. Do you know? Because it's not for everyone. Because clients no. say that, don't they? They always say, I bet everybody tells you their deepest secrets. Uh, they do. Do, do you get the deepest yeah. secrets? Because as a bloke hairdresser, I don't actually get too much of that. Oh, right. I get some. I get some deep, deep secrets. But it's because we're not, we're not friendly enough to be the best friend. But we yeah, know them on a level. Right. Where they can just release and let and let us know those kind of things. Yeah, right. I'm just going to pick up some comments here. So, Cherie, she says, I feel awkward. Love talking and feeling relaxed, even if we don't talk constantly. I, I'm going to stop on that. That's a great point there, Cherie. Don't we just fill the airways sometimes with chat because we feel awkward? And you feel that sometimes when that silence, there's a, uh, a certain awkwardness and, and that's when the chit-chat starts coming in. You're just feeling the air with nonsense. Jordana. Yeah, I mean, it, I always end up sort of saying, so, um, what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> not <laughs> a lot you, at the uh, moment. Certainly not going to be pub. Us? I've got so many. <laughs> <laughs> so do you get the intimate conversations then, Jordana? Oh, yeah, but I, 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 I feed off other people's energy, so it's not all the time. But, yeah, we get down and dirty. <laughs> right there's a conversation right do you all get real down and dirty conversations with your client yes if you do no if you don't i'm gonna to have to put no i don't get too much of that i'm really but then a lot of my clients are probably in their late 50s 60s 70s but, but hey they probably do get down and dirty they just don't want to share it with me anyway so emma uh, i recently worked in a quieter salon and it got me down i miss the chats and relationships with my clients so much but of course i still have clients that don't talk i just love an environment where everyone can be themselves great point as you said verbal or non-verbal so many ways to connect eileen how you doing i think it takes it back to your vibe attracts your tribe totally depends on what kind of stylist and experience you want to give not personally my thing but i think whenever you know a client you know when to be quiet for a little while yeah we we're great at talking aren't we hairdressers i still say it as communicators jordana we're some of the best in the world when it comes to communication oh 100 100 and we communicate on so many different levels as well yeah no, yeah absolutely right sometimes i naturally wear myself out talking that's another point george, uh, george we were talking as an industry we get quite often people will say to us Oh, it must be really hard on your feet. But don't you get mentally fatigued with conversation? Yeah, 100%. And sometimes, you know, I'll come home with my husband, David, he'll be like, da, 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 da. and I'm like, no, just give me a minute. I can't. Because you spent all day talking. And it, it is mentally draining. And of course it is. Or especially if you've got a client that, you know, has anxiety and, and doesn't know what to do with the hair. And, you know, consultations take three times as long appointment times take three times as long and it really does wear you out you know sometimes i've physically walked out of work and i've cried because i've just felt mentally mentally drained yeah oh, i've and got to say i've run two marathons in my life and every saturday after a busy day after a busy week i feel like i've run a marathon because of how much my mouth goes like that and it's like you're talking, because you know when you have a couple of clients on the go, you, you've got one client who's like a male that wants to go blonde, so you're having a bit of a Jack the Lad chat with him, and then you're going back to the other client who's a bit fragile and having a bit of a shit bit time, lost a couple of people, I don't know, lost a couple of friends or whatever, and, and then you're kind of having to be really, really timid and really, really like yeah. low energy with her, and then you've got your staff member that's like, can I have a holiday? And then someone else is like, oh, the, the plumber's here and the spa's leaking and there's whatever. There's an element of being an actor, isn't there? Because, you, you know, your personality, your tone of voice, your behaviour actually changes from person to person, which I never really thought about that. But, yeah, it's very true. So I'm, I'm probably about six different characters every day. Do you ever have to pick up your staff on their conversation? On do you do you ever have to pick up on your staff members on conversation? So let's say you hear your younger team at the backwash and it it is always been a famous thing that i've heard at the backwash are you going out tonight uh you know are you be, do you actually talk to them on how to communicate with clients george yeah i mean recently unfortunately alicia that just left us the really quiet one i sat and i actually wrote her out a list of 
a list of prompts to be asking a client just to try and really? help her. Um, yeah, because I think it's, they're, they're young. You know, I can't expect a 22-year-old girl to approach a client base or a column the same as me who's been doing it 12 years or the same as Jordana who's been doing it X amount of time. I think, I think, I think hairdressing is not just a skill in hair. I think it's a, it's a way of life, and I think you do have to guide anyone that comes through your doors, especially if you're trying to build a brand, and you have to guide them and you have to sort of train them. And perhaps that is overlooked. And that is certainly something that I did overlook at the beginning. And I, I do realise that people do need help. And you do need to teach people how to talk, how to communicate and find, find their own personality. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's some good comments coming in here before we're going to move into it's a relationship with friends without too much detail. It's giving and taking, uh, all right, Kim, all the nitty gritty. We are the counsellors as well. I mean, that's often said, isn't it, Jordana? Counsellors. I mean, do you, do you feel like a counsellor? Yeah, definitely. And I think there's a comment that's just come through about feeling boosted. So sometimes we, we actually get a natural euphoric from advising a client, even though we, we, we might be quite shit at taking our own advice. But sometimes when you feel like you've helped someone in, in an advisory way, it le leaves you feeling quite boosted and, and quite great by yourself as well. So it's actually a two-way street. Mm. Yeah, well, it, yeah. it seems to me everybody likes overall, overall talking. I have to say I love a bit of quiet time when I'm working on hair. Um, I, yeah. I find conversation when I'm on the floor for quite some hours quite draining. Uh, and I do get very tired of... Um, chit chat. I think because I've been hairdressing for uh, 34 You're really years. Yourself, I, I've got to be honest. Look, I'm just being totally honest, and I talk professional, and and, and I, I can talk on all kinds of conversations. But I've got to be honest. I find small talk really boring now, and um, and even it. I, I, I want to get a bit deeper. I find sometimes I can't go deep enough in conversations with people. It's just I don't know. Yeah. Just I, I find it a struggle. And actually, do people want to become educators because they're just getting tired of talking and they just want yeah, to? Yeah, perhaps. You know, there was there was one one moment while we were in lockdown where I looked back at some of you know the networking events that we did in in the hair industry and like some of the conversations I used to have was it always started like this how you been Jordan are you all right yeah yeah good I'm busy how are you oh busy oh good yeah busy really busy yeah it was just all about being busy <laughs> actually like little did they know that I was kind of struggling for for like filling up my my Wednesdays or my Thursdays and actually we all lie about being busy and here we are in lockdown like literally lying horizontal and looking back at lying about being busy and we're just obsessed with being busy yeah, we're busy is associated so with right. like success it, but that was the only small talk we could have with each other when you see other hairdressers <laughs> at networking events so funny that is very right good observation actually on that yeah very true right very but true. anyway look what what we were just saying earlier, you know, look, get down intimate, let's talk sex conversations. Well, I think this next bit that you're all going to love because I'm going to move us into Georgia's uh, hairdressing horror story. So if you just want sex, Georgia's giving it to us I'm every here. week, not me yeah, personally, I'm, I'm here to, to the show. Yeah, so. say that. <laughs> here we go, hairdressing <laughs> horror stories with Georgia here Bell. We go. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, it's not really a ghost, it's me, and welcome to this week's Hairdressing Horror Stories. So this week on Hairdressing Horror Stories, we officially have a sexy special. Um, I'm sorry about this, Dom, but they were just too funny that I could not not share them. So the first one is porn through my sound system. So the Wi-Fi at the salon wasn't working, so I connected it up to my phone. Now, once in a while, my friends, my mates, my lado mates send me some very inappropriate stuff. So I've gone into the staff room, I'm doing messages, I'm checking emails, and then I click on a message, and then all of a sudden, there is a 30 second really loud porn video that comes up and plays throughout my entire salon and it's only until a member of staff runs in the staff room screaming get it off do I realize what's going on oh. 
So the next one is a very rude consultation. So imagine getting a new client in your chair and you're getting on so well. You really click in, you're talking about hairstyles, she's getting your vision, you know, you're recommending loads of things and you just think, hang on, I'll tell you what, I'll just get a little bit of photo inspo from my Google search engine. Now imagine crouching down next to the chair and then flagging up your entire Pornhub history. Needless to say, the stylist that told me the story did not say a word throughout the rest of the appointment to the client. So this one actually officially had me cracking up. So we all love a bit of photo inspiration. So there was a guy that came into a salon wanting a uh, cut and colour, which is absolutely fine. And I'm used to seeing photo inspiration all the time because cut and colours change so much. Um, but when the guy got the photo inspiration out, he'd actually torn it out of a porno magazine and the cut and colour he was after was of a guy receiving a blowy D and he was deadly serious. Okay, so <laughs> this is the final one. So imagine hurting your vagina and as many women do, if you hurt your vagina, I think it's a woman thing that you'll go and take a picture of it. So imagine going in the staff room and taking a picture to see what's wrong with your vagina, going back out to the salon, leaving your phone on the side, but then a member of staff taking your phone to do social media, taking the client over to your photo wall, accidentally clicking on the picture of your minge, screaming and throwing the phone halfway across the salon. Yeah. <laughs> I've surpassed myself there, haven't I? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, where I do you get I these do. from? The, the majority from my salon, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> George, oh, where are these coming from? Can you well, give it? I, I, I do, no, no, you know what? There is a few of them that I, I, I own. There's a few that I own, but I do get a lot of responses and they are hilarious. Um, so, yeah, I just had to, I had to share them because I wanted to give you all a laugh. <laughs> uh, well, you've given everybody a lot. Uh, you don't get this on many of the uh, media sites and air industry. Yes, I, I'm sorry. That's everyone. what I love. No, hey, this is why we... <laughs> and it's nine o'clock. It's gone nine o'clock now, so we can do we can do all that stuff. Look, I can't cope. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, very, very good. So if anybody's got any questions for you, George... Uh, just reach out, get in touch with you on these. Yeah, send them over. I want bad client reviews. I want any, like, dodgy stories, any hairdressing horror stories, any brekkie with bells. Get them sent over, because they do, I do think they do give a really comedy aspect to the hair show, don't they? Yeah, I? we love it, honestly. We sit here and it, it lightens the mood. It's all, yeah, huge amounts of fun. I think we need that little bit of a laugh. And actually, Jordana, I, I, let's be honest, if we all go into our staff rooms... Uh, you know, back to conversation. But actually, you hear the conversation of your team, the things that are spoken about, eh? There's oh, another subject. It is so uncensored in there. Oh, Jesus, I... those four walls have seen too much, far too much. Oh, I tell you what, I'd love to be uh, flying on the wall in those sort of uh, <laughs> those conversations with the staff. So, yeah, look, get in touch with George. I'm sure she'd love to hear from you anything that's uh, maybe you you need her advice on then yeah reach out vaginal yeah pain, pain it's not legally vagina. binding though i have to add that it's just a little bit of advice so don't take anything i say too seriously <laughs> <laughs> looking at the reactions here george i don't think they do to be quite honest <laughs> good, good. <laughs> I, I really don't right well look we're gonna just take the mood away again a little bit because it's a big subject we're gonna be Talking in our next topic regarding PPE, I know it's one that many of you have wanted to talk about, about the waste of plastics and, you know, how wasteful we're being right now. Is there an option? So before we go into this top topic, I'm just going to play this video for you just to, yeah, dampen the mood a little bit.
Is, I think that really hits home, that one. Uh, Lee just said, this is so sad to see. Uh, yeah, where do we start on this one? Emma, I think, just picks it up here. We are in between a rock and a hard place. This is heartbreaking. So I think what we're talking about here is the sheer waste, and not just our industry, obviously just in general now, you know, with face coverings, but... How many of you, are, are, what face coverings are you using? Are you using reusable ones, uh, you know, that you, you can use time and time again, or those medical ones that just get thrown away? Jordana? I use the black ones, but I supply my clients with the disposable ones. Um, the problem is, obviously, even if we can recycle them, some of them want to, to use them for the rest of the day, so I can't take them from them to recycle them. Um, but yes, there is a good point raised in one of the uh, comments, I think it's from Lynette, about the Green Salon Collective, and they are a company that can actually dispose of all of your different waste, and they'll tell you which bins to put it in. They can dispose of foils that have colour on them, they can dispose of even hair, they can recycle hair, and they can actually make combs out of hair. Wow, you know, head clippings, phenomenal. which is amazing. And um, if you go on their website, you can partner with them. And all you have to do is invest in a couple of bins and they will do all the hard work for you. But just being a little bit sustainable like that, I think, could really, really help. It's the small it's the small bits, that, parts that we can play. And if we start doing it as salons, hopefully the local businesses will, will also. Yeah. We all have to take responsibility for it. But... It's one of those things. We are in between a rock and a hard place, but if we don't act now, it could be really, really astronom astronomical, yeah. the consequences. Maybe somebody could put that link in, actually, to the Green Salon Collective, and I think yep. that'd be great if we can have that in the comments down. I know uh, you're there putting comments in. George, are we as an industry being a bit too ignorant, though, to it? We're all very good at saying we're recycling, let's make a difference, but I still wonder, are we putting costs ahead of the actual green side of our industry i think things are very very costly aren't they at the moment for a lot of people everything's everything's you know gone up tenfold for plastic uh people have panicked there's nothing actually there's no i don't think anyone's said anywhere that you can't actually use gowns have they as long as you've got a, a clean gown between claims could you not go back to towels and gowns i think everyone just had a panic at covid and thought all of a sudden let's get disposable um without thinking the effects that it's going to be having on the environment mm -hmm. and i do get it, it's costly but actually for a little bit of time and the investment in a couple of bins because you've got to have a bin anyway when you've got a business you've got to pay a company to take away your rubbish so why not swap that ordinary bin to a couple of recyclable bins might not be any difference and it's just a little bit more time but if it's going to help the environment then surely for me i'm definitely going to look into that do you recycle jordana at your yeah. salon so you have yeah, everything is do. separated and yeah. everything is separated at the moment we're not recycling hair and we're not recycling um any ppe so i want to get in touch with the green salon collective um i think that a couple of big product companies are starting to become a lot more sustainable at their academies and that's how i found out about green salon collective mm, yeah lena it's just i have two full boxes since july recycled they're epic worth every penny yeah now these guys are doing yeah seem good and that's actually because i hear that a lot george uh, george from hair cl uh, clients saying is there anything you could do with all this hair what can we do with hair and actually again i had a great interview with oh, Sean McGrath, uh, Wiggery, and he's in Australia, and he talked about that they actually collect hair, and they use them as hairballs for the ocean, which in Australia, so basically they've stockpiled all, like, 
hundreds of thousands of hairballs because if there's an oil leak yeah. hair soaks up the oil uh, it, what, yeah. a, what a fantastic thing isn't that yeah great you know, idea I didn't it. actually realise there was much you could do with hair to be honest yeah that's, uh, that's on well, yeah, really just easy. an incredible thing, and I know he recycles things, and 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 I guess while we're on it, and and it's a big subject, and there's probably many more times we'll sort of go into this subject, but plastics as well, you know, from you you mentioned manufacturers, when are we going to see plastics getting less and less from manufacturers when it comes to products, George? I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just think people will argue it. Is this not the safer option? I mean, yes, it's not safer for the environment, but is it going to make your clients feel safer that they know that you're actually using a fresh set of something every single time? You're covering your back, you, you're making your client feel easier, and already at times where we're already a lot of us are struggling, and people are fearful. You know, it's it's. I'm not saying it's one or the other. I think it's important that people educate themselves and they educate themselves about the environment. Um, uh, but, you know, I think about how beautiful the world went when we were all locked down for three months, for, you know, for four months, how it was amazing. I could hear birds in the morning. I noticed a huge difference. And now there's just this huge stockpile of plastic all going into the ocean and into the earth again. Uh, we've got to do something. I think I think it, we ought to be responsible and actually do something towards the environment. But, well, I'm oh, going did... to go back to this because I think it's all about supply and demand if we as um you know hairdressers demand from our suppliers that they package things differently that they give us higher volumes of things rather than small quantities of things uh, for professional usage and if we demand that change it will happen because then they'll have to provide and they have to supply so it all starts with us. And as much as we, we don't feel that powerful because we're not a huge company, we're not, you know, the big brands that produce and manufacture all of it, it does start from us. It's about the conversation. It's about, you know, starting that trend and that trend picking up. And it's all it's just supply and demand. We have yeah. we have to I get mean, on board. It's like the gowns. I know, I know the guys at Scrummy, I think they do dispose biodegradable gowns. But it's like everything. It is so expensive. In comparison, and I'd still think when profits are hard, you know, and you're trying to keep things realistic, you know, like, oh, hair just is thinking, look, I've just got to go down. Yeah, is it putting my business first before the green side of it? Are we taking that slightly, you know, selfish attitude? I mean, I spoke to a hairdresser last week who had a terrible week, and they only took three hundred and fifty pounds for the entire week. Now you tell me, on three hundred and fifty quid, how on earth can you? afford biodegradable how on earth can you afford to pay your rent you know it, it, it is all about survival unfortunately but i'm not as the country heals as we get more used to this then i definitely think there's no harm in educating ourselves and i think you know as an industry we do so well at, at the industry stuff that we do and, and the work that we put in there's no reason why we couldn't do really well at changing the environment together and, and making sure it's more sustainable and biodegradable at, some something that's cost effective at the same time mm. yeah I think I, 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 mean, I, I just even want to you, you still you still can just wash the gowns or like but isn't there yeah. an issue with washing gowns the electricity the water use the the pollution of water you know people say like washing gowns is is great and i know me interview with the guys at scrummy uh rob you know he talks of you know the the reason why they're encouraging uh, biodegradable towels is because washing is so damaging for the environment as well so there isn't actually but what, if what's you have a right... cold wash and you, i don't know but you can't do a like... cold wash right now yeah no you can't yeah you know 60 degrees isn't it is that you know it, it, it's this whole balancing act isn't it we're all trying yeah, to do the right thing but the problem is trying to do the right thing is extremely expensive for salons when things are really pushed right now and this yeah. is a problem you know i'm seeing we don't want to ruin our planet and absolutely not but equally you want to keep a roof over your head you want to keep your profits tidy you want to keep clients happy it's a real difficult situation but it is saying we are going to have to work out as an industry because we all have a part to play and yeah quite frankly you know this covid is about but the planet for me is more the worry than actually covid because you know the the damage that that's coming from this and you know i've got huge improvements to make you know i'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but 
It has to be happened. And St. Kelvs, I'd love to see refills of shampoos, products. Why aren't we using refill yes. stations? Why is yeah, this happening? Yeah, we should be doing that. We could all yeah. do that simply ourselves, couldn't we? Actually, all of our plastic, all of our shampoo could go plastic free effectively, couldn't it? Yeah, I mean, you, you could you know? have, effectively, you could have style in a, a refuel station in your salons, couldn't you? Literally big, to, I don't know, but you'd have big containers, people bring in their bottle, whatever they bring in, yeah, I'd like to top up on my shampoo, and I don't know, it, it seems such a, a simple thing, and I look at all these beautiful packaging, but I, all I see is plastic, you know, it's it really, yeah. it, it's not good. I think, you know, I think an element of that, though, might be... You know, when somebody buys a product, they get that feeling of luxury, don't they? They th really feel like, you know, when they buy your products and, you know, you can go to supermarket, you can buy a crappy shampoo or whatever, but then, you know, you ask somebody to spend 60 quid on shampoo and conditioner with you, would would they feel like it's worth, you know, 25, 26 quid if they fetch your own plastic bottle to fill it up? I'm, 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 I agree with what you're saying, Dom, but I'm just talking about on a consumer basis. And when people buy shit, they want it nicely wrapped, they want it in a nice bag, and they want to feel like they've got their money worth. We're so caught up in ourselves, really. Yeah, it, it, it's all about everything about how everything is looks for ourselves. And yeah. yeah, everything's cheaper now. Let's get things cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. And it's just, that's the problem. We want everything. Could, we, we, our demand is this, our problem. You could track those clients in and say, look, if you bring back your bottle, I will refill it for you and take away the cost of that bottle, which is, let's say, two pounds. So I'll give you it for two pounds cheaper. So you're attracting them, you're giving them a bit of a bargain, and you're actually stopping them from buying it from websites like Look Fantastic, because exactly. that's what, what we I all was struggle just for. Gonna say, we struggle yeah. from like Spot Amazon on. and competing Spot with, on. you know, Look Fantastic. That is so why the way that? that you will compete against Amazon. They cannot do that. Get the yeah, back in your environment. That. You can even sell your own branded recyclable yeah. bottles you know, Cabela recyclable bottles, and um, yeah. it can't be hard to have one bottle that can do the pump, one for oils, and one that can do the wax, and you know, it doesn't have to. And how cool is that? Let people take out their own, because you've got it with like places now with rice and pasta. You can get take and get refills in shops. We should be doing this as an industry right we now. Should. You know, and, yeah, we should. and it's not hard to do. So sorry guys, I'm so in the, the conversation here with these ladies. I'm I've not looked at your comments here. Um let's come back to Emma. Uh we're gonna go back my mum makes me collect hair from allotment for her allotment it scares away the deer, etc. I had no idea it could be used yet. Yeah, so uh uh, Charlotte, uh, what's that one? Charlotte, we only use gowns and towels that we wash after each client. I can bring myself to can't bring myself to throw away plastic gown aprons. I totally get. Uh, Colette, yeah, she's put here. Color tubes, our biggest waste. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, are. They are yeah. Yeah, good. And there's me, me, me goalkeeper Harley. How you doing, buddy? Just have two <laughs> fights for what we deserve and need. Uh, Lynette, I think you're a real sort of warrior. I'd rather be safe for the environment and take a lower profit. Mm. Uh, yeah. Lindsay, I've been using scrummy towels. Now, I'm going to just finish on this whole thing, and, it, and it's sinking. I know our friends at Pivot Point UK are big friends of our show, and I love what they do with their. Uh, blockhead and I hope they don't mind but we're going to just play you this video I know ladies you won't be able to see it and the reason I want to show you this it says snap cap blockhead alright and here we go I'm just going to play this Okay, there was a bit of awkward silence there for you all, right? Now, the reason I've just played that, and by the way, Pivot Point, I love that blockhead because the reason I picked this up is blockheads. During lockdown, it would be fair to say we saw huge amounts of hairstyling on blockheads. I heard people saying they had 10, 15 lumps of plastic being ordered to them. All right, that's a lot of blockheads to keep around in your salon space, right? What are we doing with these blockheads, George? 
Um, I mean, I try, I'll have a go. Obviously, if I ordered them in lockdown first, then I will do whatever I wanted to do for my online education. And then they basically they'll get passed down until there's no kind of hair left. And then in the end, what I will do, and I can't do it with all of them, so some of them get thrown away, is we will um, shave the hair off, wrap it in cling film, and then use it for if we're colouring wigs. So okay. at least there's a little bit of some sustainable. What about the plastic itself, the plastic head? Uh, it's like, it'll, it'll stay, but obviously not all. It, it, yeah, not all dolls' heads can can stay, can they? So there is always a bit of waste. But I ensure that there's at least several cuts done done on them, three colours done on them. You know, so that yeah, we do so get, get a lot of use. It is for me people getting more use out of it, Jordan. That's why I loved about the pivot point. This snap head. Uh, one which have you seen these by the way from Pivot Point Jordan? Have you seen these ones no, that we're talking about? The snap I cap, I, I think, are fantastic. <laughs> Basically, it's a head. You, I know you couldn't see the video, but you you snap off the, the the hair itself, which they clip in, so it saves you having to keep throwing away the actual plastic head. You're just yeah. using the hair. I just why aren't we seeing more of these being available? Yeah, I've never heard of these. Like I've never I've never seen these. So. I I think, I think it's amazing, actually. I think it's great. Yeah, well, I, I love, you know... The only years I used to get out of my old mannequins is um, every year I'd keep them for a Halloween party, hang them all upside down, with loads of blood trickling down, decorate my whole house. But... <laughs> Well, that's Sadly, it. this year, if I did that, no one can come round. So yeah, I just feel that people say that they get. I know I won't name the manufacturer, but we done a recording of the very early days of the hair show, and we got talking about blockheads, and I know that they just got thrown out loads and loads of blockheads. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it, again, it's it's another thing that I think we're being blissfully ignorant of. You know, we've got to make yeah. sure that, that it's all what you said, George. It's making sure. That that blockhead, you get loads and loads of use out of. You know, for me, couldn't you make one blockhead last for a student for nearly, you know, two years in terms of haircutting? Yeah, 100%. And you could actually look at local colleges. And if you wanted to be super cautious here, like, you know, and you're only going to do one colour on it or you're only going to do one cut and then you're going to throw it away, look at local colleges because local colleges are always struggling for funding. And there's a lot of students that don't have enough money to get the doll's heads. Or the doll's heads that they've got are not particularly great quality. And it makes a huge difference to what you're doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I'd just like to think, again, I'm just going to come back to the comments here because you, oh, you don't mind again. I'd, I'd like to look back. I hate to miss these. So, so I'm just going back to the recycling here. So there was... Um, we so collect again. We do a recycle discount. Bring old bottle and they get a percentage off the new. Great idea, uh, fab idea, Jordana, uh, Paul. Plenty of brands to work with that offer great alternatives. It's up to the industry to re to switch. Refill is good, but most of these big companies are owned by polluters. And I think he's referring to some of the bigger brands. Uh, I know Paul's very into the environment. Uh, what have we got down here? Um, uh, so Lynette, she's got a snap cap. I love my snap cap. Um, love them. What an amazing idea. Yeah, pivot point. Put them in there. Let people know about these. And, um, yeah, give us um, some percentage. Oh, we're not doing any promotional advertising here for, for pivot point. I just think it was key that we just uh, let you know. Uh, Charlotte's just put here, George Jordan. I use a shave blockheads. Uh, hang on, I've, I can't see. Uh, for wig making and dressing extensions. That's what you were saying, yeah. George. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. If we color it, color it away. Yeah. yeah. Emma, she said, "God, yes, probably seen hundreds thrown away over the years, like a massacre in bins outside salons. Not, never even thought. Amazing. Yeah. It's it seems like this, which is all about. Okay, so we're going to go into our last big topic, and this one I think may get a little bit of a divide." between you all because i'm guessing that you all live all around the country and maybe some of you overseas we are going to be discussing the hairdressing divide north v south does it exist <laughs> right okay hairdressing divide this is a, a subject Inspired by George, I think, who, you know, is... Firstly, George, just explain to everybody where you're based. So I'm based in a small mining town um, called Rotherham. 
So it's quite a poor area. There's no branded clothes shops or anything in, in my town. Um, so, yeah, but we have a good clientele. Okay, <laughs> and Jordana, tell everybody where you're based. So I'm based in Kensington, which is west of London. Um, not quite central, but it's um, very close to central London. Okay, and I'm based bang in the Midlands in a village location. So it's fair to say we've got the north, we've got the south, we've got the Midlands. We haven't got the east or west. But I think from... I wonder, and I asked that question and straight away Lee's come in. I said, is there a divide? He's put, yes. Uh, I'm a northerner in the south. Right. I wonder, is the hair industry still too caught up with London, George? Um, I do... <sighs> I think, no, to, I think, do uh, you know what? I think the skill level and the stuff that goes on in London is still the most exciting place to be in the UK for me personally when I do shows. But I do think that the, the, the sort of skill level and what people are doing, it's really exciting where we are now. And I think that's probably because of social media and we can put ourselves out there more. Uh, because if, without it, like us guys would never have connected, none of this would be happening right now. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely given social media has given us the, the the chance in other areas to kind of say look at what we're doing here. Yeah, do you think it's an advantage being in London, Jordana? Um, I guess from a networking point of view, I do. But I think for for making money, no, absolutely not. Your overheads are far more expensive, and your fixed costs are just astronomical which leaves you with quite small profit margins meaning you just don't make the same amount of money if you're in um central in comparison to suburban london um so kind of swings and roundabouts here Hmm. okay well i always think that we're very obsessed by working in london if we're from outside london do you think that still exists George it, because you made a really good point that actually your profile has become yeah really well known here in the UK now um, social media has obviously played a part of that if social media wasn't around okay would you have wanted to go to London or have you wanted to be in London to work um yeah I mean I've wanted to be in London to work and I find it super exciting I, I feel like you know, I feel like if you if you're wanting a, especially if you're just first starting out and you're wanting to retrain and you're wanting a really solid career, I'm not saying I'm not selling London to people now because there's people like me, there's people like Robbie, and you know there's there's people all over that will train really well. But I think if you want really good training, you want a really good mentor. That's initially, if I'd not had my kids when I did, that's initially probably where I would have gone. But I don't think that there's, I think there's a lot of salons everywhere now that can give you that. Mm, yeah so you what you're saying is you don't need to be in london to get that train great salon i mean i go to manchester manchester and also uh, jordana here uh yeah where is it Lindsay? i'm in the west of scotland do scotland wales ireland feel very m removed from hairdressing I, I i guess where i'm coming from is so many events when they were on were in london i know we see you know pro hair uh, manchester i think hairdress journal done uh, a couple of creative head do we need to be touring the uk more giving people more accessibility to these sort of live events i think so you think so yeah i do and i did see it i did see it with fellowship hair they were doing loads of events in the midlands they were doing events in glasgow um, and I think it's great that we get to visit other people's hair homes and it's good for Londoners to kind of get out of the hustle and bustle and cities and see actually there's so much influence you can take from other cities too. Like I think Scottish hairdressers, and I might be generalising here, but are so amazing. Like they, they take talent off the chart. Um, and I think that's because they're so creative and surrounded by so much creativity and like everyone's quite... I don't know, daring with their haircuts then as well. So I think Scottish hairdressers are just incredible. Uh, do you know, but, I think um, it's, I think city hairdressers in general have that. There's more creative hub 
coming from cities whether yeah. that's and I can talk only from doing open chair night when we went to Leeds and we went to Glasgow Edinburgh I would still say Scotland was probably one of my favorite places in terms of creativity mm. and because Glasgow and Edinburgh I mean are mega cities but Lyn- Lynette here who's in Belfast um you know we can't ignore Northern Ireland can we either no, as well amazing you know, Damien Paul Stafford Lynette, you know, I yeah, mean, yeah, it, it, this is what I mean. It, it's almost like we need, you know, should we be encouraging people to work in different parts of the country rather than just in London, Jordana? Because I, I still feel London get the pull of, of more people to work, and you get probably, and you know, overseas, um, yeah, you know, I, I think recruitment, I don't think, is such oh. a problem in London, is it? Well, we can't we can't ignore the fact that it ha- we've got 11 million people. So, mm. you know, we we have to take that into consideration. That's probably why a lot of the events are held there. Um, but it's ironic because my salon's in the heart of London, but I spend lots of money and lots of team meetings trying to make the salon feel more village-like and more family-run and more you know, like the local salon where everyone knows your name. And and it's ironic because then you hear people come from village salons and they're like, I just love a city salon. But it, it's funny because you want to have both. You know, you want to have both feelings in your salon. You want it to feel like quite fresh, young and, and cool. But then you also want it to feel like everyone knows each other's names and you've been coming here 10 years. So th- there's definitely a place for both. Um, and I think that's across all cities. Yeah, Paul's just made a great comment here. Paul uh, Cochran, uh, let's just flag that up. Southie North or London v the rest of the country? Hmm. The, the, I feel that, that London does get this sort of, oh, London, London this. And, you know, because when we talk about South, you can talk, I know Viv, you know, and I know various other people who are based down in South West. They feel very isolated, but we all get drawn to London. And I think my only other thing sometimes is, is there a bit of a click to the London hairdressing scene, George? Uh, <laughs> event and you know, yeah, fellowships. I, I mean, we, you, come on, we've got to be truthful here. Is there a click to predominantly London hairdressers as ambassador roles as um, hosting events? Well, I mean, I, I I do I try to get on with everyone, me. Uh, but obviously, if you do go to London and and the, the, it's the same hairdressers going, so there's always going to be a little bit of a there's always going to be a bit of a click going off. But I've not it's not something that I've noticed too too much. But yeah, obviously. Yeah. There's clicks everywhere, isn't there? Yeah. Well, yeah, there is clicks everywhere. Do you think that, Jordana? Do you think sometimes there is. Do we see. Again, I guess what I'm trying to go at is that there seems to be a small percentage of hairdressers who do the same touring circuit and get featured in the same kind of things. And are we missing out on people because of location, or am I wrong? Uh, I, I would completely agree. I, I think. I don't see a divide anymore at all. Good. Maybe I'm just being um, naive, but I mean, my best friend James is in Birmingham. I'd visit, I'd go and visit Georgia for my bleach. I'd go. And, do you know what I mean? I, I I just don't see that divide anymore. Like Sarah Mason, I feel like I connect with her low. She's from Ireland, and now I'm ta- we're talking to hairdressers in South Africa, and you see you see some of the big companies now promoting ambassadors from all over the world yeah so, yeah. so what we're saying is this. them days are gone yeah i think yeah before social media i think there was more of a there was more of a circle because that but obviously what this just opens everybody's eyes doesn't it how does somebody know what you're doing in the north if you're based in london how do i know what somebody else is doing in london if i'm based in the north for, you know, for, so, what, for what my point value is worth I don't think there's a divide. I, I've got to be honest. I think because social has allowed anybody from anywhere to have a chance. And I think it comes down to, one, having talent, and two, and you'll know I, I believe in it, getting off your backside and making things happen and not using your, locali- your location as an excuse. And and somebody who comes to mind for that is James Masters, who, you know, he's done incredible. He's in Norfolk in a sleepy old retirement town, which he, he openly admits to. And that that's it. And George, you know, you, you've said a mining town. You know, Rotherham mm. is hardly rock and roll, is it? 
Oh, I don't know, mate. You see some sites, let me tell you that. <laughs> so, okay, so do we think there's a divide, yes or no? Um, no. I think it'd be across, no, no, no. I think I agree. Uh, no, I, I don't agree. think there's a, any divide. I think it's great. And do we feel Scotland, Wales, Ireland are all inclusive of the English hair scene as well? Are we all as one? George? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah. Think, I, think I think so that. is not yes. Well, no, I do. I do. I do. Yeah. No, I think, I think as an industry, there is far less, you know, I remember being a Saturday girl or whatever, or growing up in, in, in salons and working in salons and somebody had come and asked for some foil or they'd ask for something and that salon would say no. I don't think there's anything like that now. Well, we've already got some answers just coming in. Not everybody yeah. is... Uh, uh, Nicola, she doesn't think there's a divide. Lucy doesn't think there's a divide. Lee, yep, yeah, sorry, but yes to the disagree. Uh, I was interviewed today on BBC Ulster about uh, that's yeah about being green. Colette thinks there's a divide. Emma, no. Uh, yeah, definitely more knows. Lindsay from Scotland, she thinks there's a divide. So this is what I mean. You know, we all can sit in our worlds but some people may still think that there's a divide out there and um you know have we got to do better in just making everybody feel a bit more inclusive is maybe what i would say so great topics great topics well look I, i'm we're coming towards the end of the show um and this really for me now is probably the most important part of the show because uh, I, I'm sure she was. We, last week we saw a loss of somebody who's part of our community and certainly very part of the Weller uh, professional global hair community. And uh, she lost her life far too soon in life. A uh, young family, absolutely tragic. We referenced her, um, Jane Wallace. And I think we felt we wanted to do a tribute here. Um, we talked about Jane some time back, actually, didn't we, guys? And, yeah, devastated to hear this because she's just so young and she's like all of us. You know, she's not a hairdresser working who's done incredibly well. I mean, so sad to hear that, wasn't it, George? You know, Jane's yeah, it's lost. Yeah, broken my heart this week, actually. It's been a hard week. Yeah, and Jordana, were you aware of Jane? Yeah, so we originally introduced her on the show, didn't we? So when I first, you know... Came to, came to know her but you could see her strength from all of her posts you could see her resilience from you know how much she would share with people and the fact that she was working up until you know very 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 sick days so really really sad I think it shocked a lot of us it, it did because I think we can all relate to this situation she's one of us and you know young family uh, children herself just devastating cancer which she just couldn't overcome so we kind of felt well what's the best way how can we you know just show our respects and you know really give a tribute to Jane uh, and somebody who knew her very well was Andrew Dunn who's the um, man behind Weller Professionals Global Hair Community and we asked Andrew just to give a couple of a, a couple of minutes of just a few words about Jane so we're just going to play you uh, that uh, video so let's just bring that up for you it's from Andrew Dunn Hi, Hair Show. I've been given the difficult job to try and sum up Miss Jane Wallace's life in a couple of minutes. This won't be easy, but I'll do my best. You know, for me, Jane just became um, a, an internet education sensation. And the way she did this was incredible because she just she didn't work from a salon. She was freelance. She did her work from home and she did it from just posting her pictures. But when she posted a picture, you knew this was a Jane Wallace picture. You could just tell, you could just say that this is a Jane Wallace picture. We used to call them Jane Scary Paints, you know, and she became legendary. And you would wait to see her posts. You would wait, you would just look, because they were so distinctive. They were so signatured. So Jane, Jane's success, um, when I talk about educator, I don't talk about um, an influencer or a profile or a brand or getting yourself out there. Jane was none of those things. Jane based her success on one thing and one thing only, painting hair better than anyone we'd ever seen before. So she based it on her work. She was completely authentic. Her signature was was unmatched. We'd never seen uh, we'd never seen that that type of painting before from anybody because she had done it herself. She was completely self-trained. 
And from this, and from her pictures, she started to, to, to expand and believe in herself and she became an educator. And in the space of a year, she was booked out the length and breadth of UK and Ireland. And every time she did a course, you would see the, the posts on the Monday evening going, I'm after spending a day with this lady called Jane Wallace and I've never seen painting like it. Oh my God, incredible. And then someone would go, oh, who is she? And then they would book her and so on and so on and so on. So she created her success completely based on herself there was no brand there was no profile it was just the work and that's what made jane so special it it was it was like it was just beautiful beautiful painting and something to really cherish and for anyone who hasn't seen jane's paintings or jane's experiences she has a master class that she did before she got sick and uh, it is like a woman's life's work uh, in three, three and a half hours. And my advice to you, if you are a balayage artist or if you're somebody out there who, who really appreciates beautiful signature work, download uh, Jane's course. It's something that, that will, will stay with you forever. And yes, no, you may never, ever, ever, ever get to paint like Jane, but you'll get to see how Jane saw things. And it was uh, a pretty special way to saw it. My heart hurts to know that we won't get to spend the time together that we always did. We wanted to travel and we wanted to work together because I came from Salon and she came from freelance. And we felt that we were like the beautiful combination of oil and water that we both uh, I understood Salon so well and she understood freelance and uh, so well and we were both, we felt genuine and authentic. And that saddens me, but her work will live on through the community and I hope uh, I hope that if, if at all you love painting and you love hair, download Jane's Masterclass, you won't regret it. Have a good evening, everybody, and thanks again, Hair Show. Great, keep up the great work. It's absolutely fantastic what you're doing everything okay take care all the best andrew So this is my balayage, painting, melting and more video. It is two years uh, I've been teaching this class through various different salons. It's suitable for anybody who is brand new to this industry through to experienced hair painters. It doesn't matter what colour house you trained with, it's a, a technique based class rather than a particular brand. So any problems that you've had with your balayage or just wanting some inspiration, it's perfect, perfect for that. I'm covering everything from consultations right through the whole process, all lots, sorts of different balayage techniques, colour melting, photography, the whole, the whole package really. Everything that I've been teaching in person for over two years, uh, first time on film. I think that finished it perfectly there to see Jane's course uh, just come up there and thank you Andrew for putting those words together it's um, it did touch us all it's really touched me um, and and that course uh, I can only say my wife actually has just recently invested in that course and uh, she absolutely loved the course because she just so identifies with Jane and uh, I think have you done that course as well, George? Do I remember yeah, I've got the course, and it's it's brilliant. It's just but she's such a relatable woman. You know what I mean? So it's, it's yeah, it's such a brilliant course. So you you can have you done it, George? You're done. Are you seen that course? No, no, I I haven't got it yet, but I will be definitely signing up. Um, I think what Andrew touched there about how it was it like some of the way she paints looks quite scary, but um, her results are incredible. Yeah. Okay. Well, that course actually, everybody, any of the money that's raised from that is going to help 
uh, Jane's family are young children at this time and, and it's continuing that support. So please go and do it. And I think, you know, I haven't yet seen it, but I know we went away just for a few days and my wife sat and absolutely loved it. Honestly, she's just saying how enjoyable, how relatable she was. She loved the work on there. And Jane's work, you know, I didn't know her personally, but my, I'm going to be dead honest here with you all. One of my biggest regrets, in fact, it is my biggest regret that I had. I've been communicating with Jane on doing a podcast. Um, and uh, I actually sent her a voicemail two days before she passed to actually get that podcast and I'm devastated because um, I just think it would have been just for her children to have heard that as well. And uh, I wanted to get a story. Um, that's why I'm really glad she did the video, though, because then it's like a legacy, isn't it? It is. And um, that'll live on, so that's yeah, really I, I think cool. so. I think it to, to live on. But uh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful hairdresser. And to have that impact. And also, we also lost in the industry. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm from Sassoon. Can anybody help me here? What is it? Thomas, um, he was a creative director at Sassoon's passed away as well so please if anybody knows that now just correct me on the name there but uh yeah our thoughts there and i think as a community as the industry i think it's really important that we remember people in our industry uh so just going back at least sort of said put some stars in there i know a lot of you have been doing that uh, andrew always has beautiful words um what else have we got let me just stunning work um yeah i know elizabeth knew uh, Elizabeth Kempson, hi Elizabeth. I can't remember why we were giggling at the base in there because she was pictured there with um, with Jane. Uh, and Lee said this course is one of the best. So thank you, Lucy. Yeah, uh, Peter Dawson sadly passed away. Thomas, yeah, I, I wanted to just sort of mention on that. But look, hey, we're coming to the end. Um, how's it all been for you guys how are we feeling about this chat do, do we want to get a bit more hair going on in here what, what's your thoughts i'd love to hear your thoughts and um yeah i mean going forward we are gonna have a bit of hair because jordana we've got a little video for jordana at the end of the show um how are you feeling about the show george i, I mean i love it but obviously it's down to it's down to the audience so you know we we obviously we have our plans and i love our chats and i love our debates um, but, you know, we need to be guided by people that watch us and, you know, you need to just give us some clues as to what you'd like to see. If there's any other like creative little segments you want me to do or, you know, any more kind of sort of news readings or gossip columns that Jordana can be doing, any more hairy kind of stuff, just let us know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and how about you? Nice mixture. Yeah, I mean... I, I, I can't say enough, but actually, I think, we, you know, we say it every week, but actually coming on to this, Jordana, it's, it's such an enjoyable part, isn't it, of, of our week? Definitely. We let off a lot of steam in the green room beforehand, and then also reading your comments is just great. And I always come back to work the next day with, like, quite a lot to talk about, so... Yeah, we've got to put in the world to write, don't we, guys? <laughs> and as we say, we, we you know, sometimes we may bring up topics that... You don't all agree with, yeah, but that's actually what we want to do. This is something we talk about. We want to spark engagement and we want to get the industry talking because all three of us, and I know all you who are watching in each week, are hugely passionate and protective of our industry and everybody that works in it. And that's why we do what we do. And when I say it's a hairdresser's show, it is a hairdresser's show. We are all hairdressers don't matter what part or roles we have in the industry we are all working hairdressers we all face the same problems we all have the same joys but i think the most important part particularly now is that we keep our industry really shining a beacon of light on it because it's going through a, a challenging period as anything else is in life right now but i think for me right now george jordan is getting young people connected into our industry still yeah isn't it so yes and on, on that note i just want to quickly say that a lot of our shows are kind of uncensored because we can't filter what what people may say in the comments but um i think there was one or two people who who were you know took some comments a bit sensitively last week and we just want to apologize because anything everything we we discuss is all with good intention and um although we all have different opinions um, we don't want to offend anyone, so we just want to make sure that we 
we get that message out there because we always do discuss quite contentious issues and that we're going to have people that agree and people that don't agree. And it's okay to disagree with each other, isn't it? Yeah, but ultimately, you know, there is, we're always very sensitive to, you know, yeah. what's going on in the world and, and, and how vulnerable people might be. Yeah, and you couldn't have put that any better, really, Jordana, I think. And, um, yeah, it, it, it is. And But, you know, we all like conversation. Of um, The world becomes better through debates, not through being marmot, uh, through being just plastic and agreeing with everything that you want for popularity. We can't just agree with everything to be popular in life. Sometimes we have to yeah. give our honest opinions but the one thing i would always say we would never ever single out anybody or be personal to any particular faith religion issue you know everybody has their place in this world and uh, that's all what matters to us all but look it is an absolute pleasure so um yeah everybody's there's some great comments i know jordana and george would go and have a look at some of those another great show i love listening to you guys charlotte um so yeah i'm gonna get you ladies to say your farewell so we'll start with you Jordana right guys um, I'm, I'll see you on Monday I haven't got much planned I've got cre uh, Creative Head Salon Smart which is on Sunday you can buy tickets for it. it's only £35 otherwise um, have a great weekend and I'll see you Monday Mwah. oh we love her and she's lovely okay yes, George yes. Well, you, say your farewells Right, goodbye everyone. It's my birthday weekend this weekend, so that's just that's me over and out for the entire weekend and I'll catch you on Monday. <laughs> See you later. See you later, George. Don't you love them, aren't they? Just brilliant. Honestly, they're such a pleasure to work with every Monday. So just a reminder, yeah, we're, we're here tonight, Wednesday night, 9 o'clock. Uh, we are going to be getting back to our Mondays. We do have to change things around on dates going forward sometimes, just purely because we have so many things going on. Maybe one of us is away or... I was away actually just on a holiday, hence why we moved it to tonight, week before was Colour World. So, yep, we're back on Monday at 8 o'clock. Uh, the best way to make sure that you do not miss this show is to keep, was to follow or like the How To Cut It page, all right? So many of you may be on the How To Cut It hairdressing community group, but we have our page, that page, that's where it goes out from. We promote the event we actually set it up as an event click on that and then you'll get an automatic notification of when it goes live so it's been just such a joyful thing to do uh, it's been yeah one of great things and you know been great to remember jane as well that was very special for us tonight i just want to say thank you to all of you who are tuning in each week we know who you are and seeing new faces coming in is absolutely brilliant keep telling your friends and your colleagues about the show and uh, Emma did put about putting in more hair demos. Please get in touch with your hair demos. If there's something, you've got it on your phone or there, it doesn't have to be high tech video quality uh, videos of hair work. If you've got something that you would like to share in a two minute video or so, get it over to us and Dan will put the email yes. address below. All right, we want to get that work in there. We like to bring you the hair, but predominantly it is going to be conversation points. So I just want to say thank you all to you for tuning in. Uh, we are going to finish with a little bit of hair. This is from Jill Dunner. So until next Monday, peace, love and smiles all the way. Goodbye. <laughs>